All right, brother. We are live, man. Live with Mr. Brit Sikora, dude. What is up, bro? How you doing? Good, man. How are you? How are things? I'm doing, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I'm happy to be in business with you, brother. Yeah, definitely, dude. A pleasure. It's been a uh, it's been a fun first week or or what are we day eight now? I think since we made the switch, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, man. It's 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 been crazy from from what I hear. I, I talked to Dave uh, obviously uh, yesterday, man, and and just uh, the whirlwind of, of what's happening with you guys and and. Uh, it's just it's just been craziness, man, and it's just getting started. I mean, from what I hear. Yeah, yeah, and it's already you know it's it's funny. We 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 thought that there was definitely a demand within our market for it, and and or within the U.S. I should say, and um and we've really been uh, blown away by by how much we underestimated that at this point so far. So it's yeah. it's it, it it's awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Well, I'm excited to dig into that. So um, what I usually do with the show is um. <clears throat> I usually just I'll try to grab a little background on you, man. So let's let's talk a little bit about like, um, you know, how you got. Well, let's talk first about you, and then talk about how you got into real estate. Sure, sure. So um, yeah, a little background on me. Um, grew up in New Jersey, outside outside of the suburbs, um, about an hour outside of Manhattan. Out of high school, started a uh, landscaping company just to kind of breeze through this somewhat quickly. Um, 2007 ended up selling the landscaping company after doing it for about four years. So as a as a blue collar guy, and I was thinking to myself, well, you know, how do I how do I make more money? And 2007, I think we all remember, real estate was certainly a good idea in the in the first half of that year. So sold the company, got my real estate license, um, ended up working for Weikert Realtors out of Randolph, and yeah. made no money for I think uh, <laughs> I think a good. You know, maybe a good six, seven, eight months, and and then went into the the car business because I just needed to make money. Right. Uh, started selling cars, and then from there, uh, that was going well. And then I think we remember what happened in, in September, October, two thousand eight. That market completely dropped out as well, along with sure. the stock market, Lehman Brothers, the whole nine. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm you know, twenty two year old kid, and and, <laughs> and and it's not everything's not really going as planned. And and prior to that, everything kind of had gone as planned in my life. So. It was a it, it was a bit much, but um, I saw an ad on Craigslist that was like, "Hey, come come do rentals, make a hundred grand your first first year in real estate." So I I picked up, went to Hoboken, which wasn't too far from me at the time, and started doing a ton of rentals with Dave DeVoe. Actually, he and I started right around the same time, and um, the the rest is kind of history. But that's 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 how I got into it. So that's that's where it all started. Yeah, how old are you now, man? I'm thirty two. All right. So you're still a young guy. Um, I, 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 it's it's funny how like we have those experiences in our life. Like, you know, when you went to work at Weigert and then you went into the car business. Right. Yeah. What did you I, I'm, I'm just curious, man. What did you take out of those two experiences that is now serving you still today? Well, like I said, I mean, in my in my honest opinion, that's my that's like my first failure. And, and prior to that, I was pretty, pretty like I wasn't a great student in high school, but I was always got by and I did I did my my whole thing. I didn't go to college um, and I just kind of like everything always went my way. The the landscaping company was um, growing super fast. And I just realized I didn't it's not a road I wanted to go down. So I sold it. And that was the first like, you know, as Mike Tyson would say, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Um, yeah. That was like my first punch in the face, in 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 my opinion, in my in my whole life. So. Um, that was it's just, you got to push through it, man. That was a big thing. And then also the, uh, the car sales, those guys, um, they, they know how to close. Like they teach you how to really push to that next level of that sale and get out of your comfort zone and, and greet people in the lot. And I hated selling cars. That wasn't like my thing, but yeah. It, it really, it really taught me how to get out of my comfort zone. And again, I was 20, 21 at the time or whatever. So, um, it was a lot of fun and, 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 and I would say, yeah, that, that was a big, big takeaway with that. Okay. So bottom falls out of the car, um, industry and then, and then what happens after that? So bottom, how did you reconnect? How did you reconnect with real estate? Yeah. So bottom falls out of the car industry and I'm looking, well, you for, went to the rentals, right? I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, I, 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 omitted a part. So you went, you went into the, the rental portion of it in Hoboken. That's where you met David. And then how did you connect into residential real estate? Yeah. So I'm looking for, um, you know, any way to make money at that point in time, I had kind of run out of my savings from selling the landscaping company and, and again, wasn't making money in the car business. So I was just online. I was on Craigslist and I was looking, looking around. And, and again, it, it was literally a Craigslist ad that was like, make a hundred 
grand your first year in real estate doing rentals. So it's like, boom, okay, perfect. Um, and Dave DeVoe had actually come into that company uh, and it was a small mom and pop, um, had come into that company maybe a week or two prior to that. So we were both, you know, he, he taught me quite a bit in regards to rentals that he figured out in like those two weeks, but we were both um, just figuring it out and really we got good at it. I mean, we were doing, you know, 20, 30 rentals um, a month, which is, uh, you know, income wise, not bad for somebody who just kind of started all over again in real estate. So sure. um, it was a it was a quick thing. And then he and I both started kind of looking at each other like, where do we go from here? How do we get into sales? Um, I think Dave did his first sale. And then I had kind of done my first one. And we're like, oh, this is the same amount of work, but this is this is more money. So yeah. So did like, you need your license for that day or for Brett? Did you did you have to have a license to do rentals? Uh, yeah, you did. Yeah. So, so we, we were licensed. We could do sales with it as well. We were just set up at more of a rental shop. So, um, yeah, they, they were very good at training how to do rentals and how to do them at, at a high level. We had a lot of great agents actually at that company doing rentals that are that are now uh, either at Keller Williams or or have switched over to EXP already. As well. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So. OK, so so Dave does his first sale and you guys are like, well, shit, this is like this is like four times, five times the money. Uh, it's the same amount of work. And then yeah. it, uh, uh, and, and then a light goes off. Right. Correct. Yeah. And so yeah. what happens after that? So then Dave and I met with um, it was actually Patrick Southern, who was a, a, an agent at Liberty Realty, which is the biggest mm -hmm. mom and pop we have by us. They're, they're yeah. uh, maybe 350 agents or so. So um, we met with them and, and he basically outlined everything that he does in, in regards to selling homes. And he is a Mike Ferry agent, which I'm sure you're familiar with their coaching, heavy prospecting, oh, yeah. heavy phones kind of guy. And, and basically laid out what Dave and I needed to do in order to, um, to, to grow out our business. Um, we made the switch. We got into coaching, started prospecting like crazy. I think Dave and I maybe took 18 or so sale listings, majority FISBOs um, at the time in 12 weeks or so. So we were off to a pretty rocking good start. Wow, dude, that's incredible. So you guys were just pounding the phones, man, for, for sale by owners? It, yeah, we were having fun doing it. We had, you know, 7.30 in the morning, we had Rage Against the Machine blasting. Um, again, I, you know, just just having just having a good time, um, having a lot of fun. And and what I didn't realize and what Mike Ferry Coaching didn't, didn't teach me was, you can sell a lot of homes, but there's a whole nother art on keeping the deal together. So this is this is great. Everything's going perfectly um, as planned. And then what we had what what had happened to me is I, I had maybe, you know, eight of my 12 under contracts fall out of being under contract oh, like November, yeah. December, and 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 I'm like, oh crap, where you know, how am I gonna pay for anything right now? This is this is not good. So I say that that is my second my second time that I didn't plan and, and kind of got punched in the mouth was right around there. So what I did was Dave kept pushing forward. I went back to rentals, which was comfortable for me, um, and just started firing out rentals again. I was like, look, let me get back to make, let me make 120 grand a year. Let me do rentals. Let's let's get, and again, I'm still young, so it's great money for me. Um, so, I, so I went right back into that and, and did that for another, I guess that was 2010 to 2013 uh, was just fire. Okay. Animals. Yeah. So, and then you saw Dave continue to have some success and you're like, screw this dude. I, I, I'm, I'm going for it. Yeah. So, so what had happened is then I, then I basically buddied back up with Dave um, cause Dave had been trying to, to, you know, we had both been trying to figure out a way to work together in those three years. Sure. Uh, so finally, you know, 26, I think, yeah, I was 26 years old and I started thinking, Hey, I'm not a kid anymore. Um, need to really start making, you know, real money in my opinion. So Dave and I got back together. Um, and he really showed me how to kind of like blow the roof off of it. Um, and, and we, we, we took it from there and, and, uh, you know, did a ton of work together. And, and then I started my own team in late 2015, early 2016. And, the rest is history. That's that's where we're at now. Just been on the wait a minute, dude. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. So, <laughs> no, you, no. You, so you're 2016. You just started and like you're already at 130 deals and like 40 something million dollars. You just started. 
I started the, well, I, I had sold real estate prior to that, but I started the Sakura group in January, 2018. Yeah. So Dude, um, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing. So, so we got to dive into that, right? I, I know what we really wanted to hit on is, is your just listed, just sold strategy and, and, and you tackling internet buyers. Yeah. But how do you, how do you go from 2016 to today, which is the beginning of 2000. So you're like three years in, how do you, I mean, how do you ramp up that kind of production, dude? Uh, so for me, one thing is, is, and, and I was going to touch on is um, I'm, I'm great with internet leads and I'm, I'm great with database. So, so obviously there's the aspect of me busting my ass um, in that respect. And then February 1st, I would say of 2016, my first agent came on Eric Goldfarb um, who turned out to be an absolute rock star. He's, he's, okay. he's my right hand man in, in, in this whole thing. Um, still didn't have an admin. My, my, my third hire was actually an admin. So that's when we started, you know, didn't necessarily follow the model to the T, but, um, <laughs> went from there and, and started to get, you know, a little bit of momentum. So we ran through, um, 2016, I think it was just me and me and Eric for the most part. And it was, um, uh, Andrew Cassie had come on, but yeah, it was mainly our production. I think we did about 15, maybe 16 million between the, between the two of us, the majority of me and Eric started kicking. Um, so and, was most of that like internet buyer leads at that point? Yeah, so it was, it was internet buyer leads. It was database. It was a lot of the past renters that I was converting into sales because they were all kind of look. they were growing up with me. So we were all hitting like 27, 28 years old. Sure. You know, it, it started with me working with like-minded you know, individuals that were kind of within my age group. And then we, we were all getting older and I was just managing my database properly. Um, we could do a three bedroom rental because we're in a heavy urban area. And and that's three contacts, that's three different people that I can touch on in regards to growing out that, you know, if there are three girls they are probably gonna get married, three guys are ex exact same thing, vice versa. And I really, yeah. even if I didn't rent the client, I made sure that they stayed in my world one way or another because you know, we look at it as every person you talk to, it, it has the potential to change your life, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. And I know I, I, what I don't want to do is gloss over that because um, I, I want people to hear that. What you just said is like you, you hung on to a database, right? And that, and that database is what's serving you even still today, right? You still, you still have other components of your business, but that database is your goal mine, right? And so you hung, you, where, where do you, if you don't mind me asking, what, what, what kind of, uh, what are you using for your database right now? So we do viral marketing um, and then we're obviously touching on it, uh, you know, every quarter we're, we're, we're reaching out to everybody, but we do viral marketing. The videos are very okay. big with us. Um, and then we use Boomtown as well. So we like to have everybody, like if we sell them a home, if they're a buyer, we want to sure. keep them on an update. So we know we're mapping out their neighborhood. They know everything that's going on. Um, and then that way they're, they're completely up to date. So those are touches that happen twice a month. I mean, they're fairly frequently um, without us really doing too much, but that way they're happy. They know what's going on. They can see the market trending in which way, whichever way it's going. And then obviously the viral videos. So we'll, we'll shoot those and make sure we're adding value content. Again, giving them market updates. We've shot mold, asbestos videos. We've shot stuff with contractors um, the whole nine. We always want to have some sort of uh, content to that. Um, and then obviously the, the phone call, the text message, even if it's just a Facebook message, that sort of thing, just making sure that we're constantly connected with our database. Yeah, sure, man. And so, okay, so that's how you guys really ramped it up, man. So you, like, I'm, I'm curious though, man, if we back it up just a little bit, like what changed? Because you gave, the first time you gave it a go, right? You, you, you had eight or 12 deals in contract and then eight of them fell apart. And then you hit the rewind button and went back into rentals where it was safe. And and then saw Dave had, having some success, and then reconnected with Dave. But what? So what changed from from the Brett Sikora, uh, who's who's who made the decision to go off and start his own team, to the Brett Sikora that decided to go back to rentals where it was safe? Like what changed in that time period, man? I'm curious. So for me, I just kind of had a. Uh... I just kind of woke up, honestly, my 26th birthday, and I have Eric, Eric Goldfarb on my team, and he, just, he just hit the same date. For me, that was a very pivotal thing that that had, it had an impact on me. I can't explain why. I, I mean, I just really was like, I need to, again, money was, money was good with the rentals and everything, but I'm like, I, I need to, I need to 
grow up or I need to like, I need to really focus and buckle down on this thing because there's just so much opportunity. And I felt like I wasn't anywhere near the level of what I was capable of. Um, and I should say, um, you know, that was the beginning of it. Again, super fortunate to have um, Dave DeVoe take me underneath, underneath my wing or underneath his wing in regards to that. And he kind of showed me, you know, how to just transfer this. And I was, I was, you know, heavy buyer sales. And then uh, when I really kind of unleashed, I, I guess, my, my true potential is when I was working with Matthew Ferry, who, who I don't, I'm not sure if you've uh, ever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, we dove deep into the mindset aspect of things. And, and he really taught me to be fearless and, and take massive, massive action without the fear of consequences, you know. So, and that's, so are you working with Matt personally? Um, so Matt and I aren't personally. I was I was one on one coaching with Matthew for about about 16 months or so. And then I was in his mastermind after that. So a total of, you know, two years or two and a half years. I was at one of his events. Uh, um, I can't. <laughs> I'm trying to blank on the name of it. Uh, Epic Epic Life Live. I was at that uh, in January out in Orange County. Um, just as like my little tune up to keep Matthew um, in my life. But yeah, that uh, not actively working with him, but what an impact uh, he had on my life and, and the way that I viewed things. It was insanely powerful. And it was, it, that was definitely a, a second big shift that came into my mindset late 2015 when, when he flipped my world upside down. Yeah. So, okay. So here's what I'm hearing, man. Um, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Um, Cause Dave and I had this conversation a little bit yesterday too. It, it, it's, it's not, you, you didn't really change as the person, but the mindset changed. The mindset was the thing that shifted. Like totally. the skill set was exactly the same. Like you still had the same skills, just the mindset shifted, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like an, an insane shift. And that really is, that's, you know, that's what I try to preach to my guys on the team. That's, that's all it is. I mean, it, I don't want to like, it's not an easy thing to shift your mindset. Yeah. But when you're, when you're giving to people or you're just reaching out and, and, and constantly giving on a massive scale without expecting anything in return and just knowing that, uh, you know, whatever this universe is, or whatever it is that, it's going to reciprocate from some other area. It doesn't have to give, it doesn't have to come back from that person that you're pouring into. It could sure. come from over here, it come from over here and you just have to appreciate it when it does show up and, and be grateful. You know, dude could not agree with you more about that. I, that's, that's very well said, man. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of that myself. Yeah. So, so obviously you go off, you start your own team. Um, you guys start crushing internet leads, right? And then, and then you start to shift into listings, I'm sure at some point. And then um, segue into how you're utilizing the Just Listed, Just Sold campaigns. And then we can talk a little bit more about buyer lead generation and how you're handling your buyer leads. Definitely, definitely. So I had always, um, I, you know, obviously I like the, the FISBOs. We had good success with those, but I really liked the Just Listed, Just Sold when I was, um, you know, back in my Mike Ferry days. I just felt like, hey, if you have, again, we were buyer heavy. So if you have buyers that are looking for property and we're in a heavy bidding war market, let's just call the building. Let's reach out to everybody within the building and say, hey, my buyer just got smoked in a bidding war. Wanted to reach out and see if you uh, would ever consider selling your unit at X price. If so, give me a call. And, and keep in mind, we're a heavy condo market. So sure, we have 250 unit buildings, that sort of thing. Um, so we did a lot of that. And then the main pivotal point where we started to have, you know, quite a few more listings come on is we hired uh, Danny Spitz, which, which uh, has been a heavy listing agent that that really started prospecting on a high level. Um, and we're talking 50, 60. I mean, he's hit a true 100 contacts in a day. None of that, like where people, you know, hype up and like, oh, I, I did a, you know, X100 or something like that. Yeah. They, uh, he, he literally would lock himself in a room for 11 hours a day and just dial on a mojo dialer until he hit that and and okay that is when we yeah really got heavy into the justice of just solds okay and so and so then the listing side of the business really starts to take off right and you guys so you guys would throw you guys would go into mojo you would do like the mapping feature uh and then you, you i mean you could obviously with when you have entire condo buildings with 250 units you, you call you know one whole building right and yep. and, and just one fail swoop and essentially you guys are just saying, hey, I mean, and and I, you know, you may be able. We do this as well, but you could go into your Boomtown database, right? And you could find buyers who are looking for a property. You you don't even necessarily have to know who they are, uh, but you could say, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I've got you know 16 buyers that are looking in your specific area of Hoboken, New Jersey. 
Um, and you know, people get interested, right? I mean, that that's you can, and, and the funny thing is you could bring your, your iPad in on a listing appointment and show your, your, your buyer pipeline. And, and that, 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 that boasters a lot of weight when you've already got buyers that are in your pipeline that you could show your sellers, right? It, yeah, exactly. So we'll go in, we'll, we use Boomtown as a tool all the time on listing appointments and we'll go in, we'll grab, let's say, a, you know, something from the hot sheet and we're showing the sellers, Hey, you know, cause we have 7,000, 8,000 people in the database. Hey, this one bedroom in, in Hoboken, uh, very similar to your unit. It shows you, we have 98 buyers that fit well for that. So as soon as you sign the listing agreement, the first thing we're going to do is one of our buyers agents is going to reach out to all of them and see if they want to come take a look at the property. Um, and we, and we made very, we made it very clear too that that the mistake that we've made or in the past that we don't do anymore is we don't do that until they sign the listing agreement because otherwise they start to take advantage of you and, and try to say well just bring me a buyer just bring me that yeah. I'm like, no we're not going to work until you sign here and we'll go yeah. we'll go after it on all angles so do you do you guys do any uh, mail pieces at all Brett or is it just like are you with your just listed just sold is it mainly just like pounding the phones? It's mainly pounding the phones, but our goal is to get um, their email address if they don't want to have an appointment. We're going to send them over a market report um, from there, and then we're also going to get their mailing address. So again, to use, to use Danny as an example, he's been with us for maybe 14, 15 months. He's already added over 1,800 emails into our database, him alone. We were talking about that earlier. Um, all of those people and anybody who's a past client, anything in regards to that, they're getting the drip campaigns through Boomtown. So they have the property updates, which we're talking about, but then they're also getting um, postcards just monthly. We don't go too crazy with it, um, but we just, it's, it's another way for us to touch on quite a few people uh, without, you know, the, the, the cost of postcards isn't anything too crazy compared to some of the other stuff you can spend money on. So we run that okay. all the background. So is Danny, is Danny like an ISA? He is he he's a he is a listing agent, but he he functions as an I like he goes on the appointments, but yeah, he certainly certainly functions uh, as an ISA. He has that that mindset where he can lock himself in a room for very long periods of time and not stop dialing. Okay, dude, I need one of those. Can you get me one? <laughs> well, that so, could, okay, so, yeah, so, I was gonna so say that goes really into where where we've where we've grown from there, which was the, like how we got good at those things. So. Yeah, got it. So the way your team is set up right now is it's like you, you, you mentioned Eric, right? And then yeah. you mentioned, you mentioned Danny, and then you have an admin now too. Yeah. So we have a, we have a marketing and um, listing coordinator. Once okay. we go under a contract or get an accepted offer that switches over to a transaction coordinator who focuses heavily on that. Um, and we also have an operations manager too, and he's making okay. sure all the numbers are constantly working. Okay. And, and then, so talk about like what, like your strategy for buyer lead gen, like what, how are you guys, cause we've all heard, you know, you got to hit them in the first five, we, we've been hearing this, this type of stuff for years, but you guys are take, kind of taking it to a different level, man, with, uh, with your conversion ratios and stuff. So what, what exactly are you guys doing with internet leads? So one of the big things, um, you know, we, we have realtor.com, we have Zillow. It, we, we do actually have our Forex return on those, which is what we try to track metrics wise. Um, so, so they do work. They are profitable. But keep in mind, we do have a good price point here too. So like we've had $2.5 million sales from a realtor.com lead. That's going to shift those numbers up. Um, but what works really well for us is using the shark tank feature on Boomtown. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if you're, are you familiar? Well, I guess I can kind of let the audience know, even if you're familiar with that. Yeah. 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 Um, but what happens, obviously we know speed to lead is, is a super important thing. And I think, uh, maybe within the last year, a year and a half ago, they unleashed shark tank which the buyer lead when it comes through, it hits the, the, every agent on the team at the exact same time. And the first person to claim the lead is the one that gets the lead. What works well for that is obviously speed to lead is covered. I think we're responding in like two seconds um, as, as an average time or eight seconds. I know uh, Jason, my ops guy has, has all the numbers on that. Um, but also the agent doesn't feel obligated to respond to a lead that lands in their account. Like if they're on an appointment, or their listing appointment, or if they're out with buyers or something in regards to that, they, they, they sometimes then like, hey, let me step outside, let me call this lead, because they know how important it is to get to it very quickly, because that lead might be firing through all the listings on Zillow or all the listings on Trulia. So Shark Tank for us was, was, a, was a pivotal moment where, um, where things got much better speed to lead wise. Uh, and again, you know, the agents seem to like it. It kind of gives a competitive side where it's hitting everybody and, and they're all 
getting after it. And they all have an equal opportunity. There's no playing favorites in that aspect. Got it. Got it, man. So you guys are, I mean, obviously you're trucking along at a high level. You guys are just crushing it right now, man. And, and, um, and, and this company, you hear about this company, right? It, it, this company is called EXP. And, and, um, you know, I, I asked David the same question. So I'm just curious, like when you first heard about it and, and I know the answer to some extent, but I know our audience doesn't. So, yeah. um, so just to enlighten our audience, like when you first hear about EXP, your reaction and, and then talk a little bit, you know, about what, what followed. Well, yeah, to, to, I guess to, to, to go back a little bit, we moved to Keller Williams back in 2015. So the first time I had ever heard of EXP was right after we made that move. Somebody sent me the video and said, watch this. And I said, I'm not watching that video. I know it's going to look great. I don't want to know anything about this new company. So I didn't watch the video. And then fast forward, uh, what was it? Maybe August, uh, Gary Keller announced that they were going to start having cloud brokerages uh, where the expansion teams can run at a lower cap, this, that, and the other thing. So I got pretty excited and knew that, um, you know, I, I personally wasn't leaning too much on my market center at the time um, for that. So I'm like, great, this will this will lower the caps for the people on the team, that sort of thing. It's going to make it easier to recruit. Great. Hold that back. So then I start, you know, and that went away. Um, so I started kind of researching along with Dave and 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 we're looking for, you know, a way that we can kind of negotiate our splits down, or at least me personally, uh, negotiate my splits down. So everybody on the team got something better from Keller Williams. Maybe they go on a quarter cap, that sort of thing. And the more we looked into it, the more we were like, this, <laughs> this company makes a lot of sense. You know, this is like, I didn't want to leave Keller Williams, you know, but once I, once I saw like Brent Gove's video from September, I was like, how, how, how can I leave? You know, how this is, this is, looks like an excellent company. So we really, we started digging uh, quite a bit in it. I mean, we, we, we didn't, we didn't want to leave KW. So we didn't, we didn't necessarily want everything at EXP to be real. And um, everything was real. Everything was checking every box and we're like, man, this looks awesome. So we flew to Scottsdale and when we realized we couldn't not go was when we're sitting at a table with Jay Kinder and Dan Beer and Kyle Whistle. And we're having this dinner with, you know, 10 of, 10 of the, 10, 10 of people, like people that I watch YouTube videos on that I've never met face to face. And I realized like I'm the dumbest person sitting at that table. And yeah. these guys are like giving me their cell phone numbers and telling me how their business was running and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, th like this is value. This is culture. Like this is what is, this is what everybody talks about. You know, like everybody throws that, that, that word culture around and throws that word value around like crazy. But like when I can, when I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to go from 46 million to, to, you know, 200 million or 150 million. And I'm sitting at a table with nine guys that have done it before that all pick up my cell phone when I call. <laughs> that's, that's important because we're going to get there a lot quicker that way. Uh, and, and it's already started to show like, I mean, Dan beer has been like, like stuff like this, man, we're, we're, we're having a, a, a live video, you know, like this, this, this is a lot of fun. And Dan beer was on a zoom call with, with, me and Dave the other night and, and, you know, for an hour of his time and just, just stuff that I could only, you know, dream of the network that that's now available to me and Tammy out of Texas and linking her up with my expressive agents that, that I personally can't relate to as perfectly because I'm a driver style personality. It, it's just, it's incredible and, and made me want to like, and it made Dave want to like, how do, how do we continue this along? How do we continue to give this gift? Like, how do we show what we saw and make sure that, everybody's getting true value and, and true culture and true energy in this business. And, and the feedback that we've gotten so far from the agents that, that, that we've taken over is they're just, they're attracted to the energy of it. You know, there's nothing old about it. Everybody within this is excited. Everybody's aligned. Um, and, and we're just, we're, like I said, we're, we're having fun doing it, man. It, it's yeah. a lot of fun. I can hear your voice, man. And that's, 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 that's awesome. So, Answer that question for me then. So how, how, how do you continue to add value? How do you, how do you contend to, to contend to extend this journey out? So for me, I mean, there, there's obviously, um, we're constantly pouring into our team. We're constantly making sure that, that, that we do that, but we're, all, we're constantly pouring into our downline now that's come over as well. And Dave and I are constantly like, you know, we're on the phone every day and, and, and figuring out like, what is the best way? How do we touch as many people as possible and make sure that we can help grow their businesses to the level that, 
um, you know, we've been able to grow ours so far and, and, and it's, it's not hard to do, man. It's, it's, it's really, um, it's like, pick up the phone when people call, talk to them, give them, give them time, you know, give them, give them a piece of your day. It, it doesn't take a lot of time to, to really affect somebody's business in a positive way that, that, that's aligned with you, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean, Dave and I are working quite a bit <laughs> right now. We're, we're keeping busy and so are the guys on my team, but you know, we're, we're pouring into everybody and, uh, and, and our hope is that they continue to pour into to everybody in their lives as well. And we, we just continue to, to like take over and, and, and have fun and, and really, really reinvent the wheel. I mean, I feel like that's what this brokerage is doing. It, it, it's, it, it's a similar wheel, but it's, it's, everything is just, in my opinion, so much better. I mean, it's yeah. like, it, it really is. It's like, if you watch one of those Brent and Go videos, for instance, or, or you come meet with us or you come to one of our seminars, um, it, it clicks for pretty much everybody in that room, or at least it has so far from what we've seen. And, and I think it's like you said, I mean, it, it, it's sh- like, we're not faking it. It's we're it's fun. It's real. It's, it's something to, to really pay attention to. Um, and, and, and we're just happy to be a part of it, man. No, no doubt, brother. No doubt. So I'm, I'm curious, man, what was, what was the, um, what was the impact on, on your group, man, for, with coming over and t- talk to me a little bit about like, because I don't want to gloss over that part of it, especially for other team leaders who are watching or will watch this in the future or listen to it. Yeah. Um, you know, because there's there's a decision you make as a solo agent and really it just it impacts maybe you and your family. Right. But when you make a decision as a team leader, it impacts everyone on your team and their families. So I'm curious, how did you approach that situation? Yeah. You know, so so what was good about that is they knew I was working on on trying to get us better splits. I mean, I think that the whole look. I, I was happy. Everything was was good for me. And I think that the, the main reason why I started looking around is I had agents saying to me, hey, we don't mind paying you money, but we don't think we should be paying Keller Williams this much money. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a big that was that, that stuck with me. You know, that that was what kind of started the whole thing. They're asking, hey, when do I cap? When does this happen? This, that and the other thing. And 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 they weren't seeing value within the company that we were at. And we started realizing that, like the 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 agents are the team, the team leaders are what, you know, and the culture, that's what's kind of creating the value. So um, they had kind of known about it. Um, and I had, I had talked to, you know, my, my kind of my top guys within the, within the organization and, and they knew about it as well. And they both, they took it, they took it well. And then we announced to the whole team and in a group setting um, and everybody was at, <laughs> you overthink these things in your head, you know, it really yeah. is it, like day one, they're saving a big chunk of money. Yeah. Um, and then if they decide to participate in the revenue share side of things, then great, we're going to help you with that too. But just as a lateral move, I mean, Dave and I really did a lot of digging to make sure that we figured out the answers and the pieces, all the puzzles so that we wasn't just a, a, a sloppy transition. I mean, we were third party on every, every aspect of our business. So the only thing that changed for us, was the logo went from Keller Williams to EXP yeah, and the phone number, you know, so that made it a lot easier. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you talked about the the culture and the community um, because, uh, and I talked to to Dave a little bit about this yesterday too. It, it, it was not anything like what we anticipated, what it actually was. Um, And, and I like, I wish I would have known that because not that our decision was hard to come over. I mean, we were, we were moving a significantly, um, um, a significantly uh, large team. Like it was like we had 20 something team members, right? We were moving over. And and certainly um, we wanted to make sure that we had everybody in alignment. Uh, And and it was, it was never part of my, it was never part of my talk track um, to tell those agents about the community and culture that we would be embraced by at EXP. But man, I wish I would have been able to talk about that. I had no idea of the outpouring of when we join um, the people that reached out to me and, and, and we're talking about those same guys, right? And we went to, um, we went to an event down in, in New Orleans, um, which I'm sure you'll be at next year. 
uh, where, you know, we just, everybody just clicked. Everybody there is on the same, like every, everybody's on the same playing field. There's no egos, man. There's no animosity. There's no competition. It's just everybody sharing. It's, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. And you got to experience a little bit of that when you went to Scottsdale, but I, if, if I, if I could, if I could now rank the, you know, the top reasons why I came to EXP, I would put that as number one. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and again, that taste of it in Scottsdale was like, uh, I can't, I couldn't, I get chills thinking about it. I can't describe how, how, you know, I, I like, I want my team to be at the next one. I can't wait for New Orleans. I can't wait for Orlando or, you know, any, any event that we can be a part of any mastermind because it really is. It, it, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, while we're on this phone call right now, DeVoe's director of, of, of growth, Sekou, is training two of my top guys, Danny Spitz, we talked about. They're going through NLP and objection handling and everything on a live scope, Skype call <laughs> as well. And we're direct competitors in the same marketplace. And his sales coach is training my guys now. Like that's that level of alignment is, is, is insane. Talk about you know? why he can do that now though. Talk about why he can do that. So, so yeah, the way the you know, like, like Dave says in his videos too, the way the downline works here or the way the rev share works is like, there actually is a financial benefit to it where that at our last company, did, it just didn't exist. Like we had the profit share, we had everything, but you know, the paychecks were, 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 yeah, it was cool. It's cool to get passive income, but it wasn't like what you see here. You know, we can actually quantify like, hey, if, if you have a capper in your first line, you're making 2,800 bucks that year. If you have a capper in your second line, you're making 3,100 bucks next year. Go play around with, a, with, with, with an EXP rev share calculator and, and start seeing how the levels unlock and stuff like that. Watch some seminars. And this is what my team's really starting to get. They're starting to figure out one week into it. And they're like, wait a second. So I can prospect agents in that area and get them in front of like you and Dave and bring them to a seminar and that sort of thing. And, and then they get to be a part of this. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, okay, great. You know, like this, this, <laughs> this is it's fun. A game changer, man. I actually had a, uh, I had an agent say to me today and, and he was like, look, I like selling homes and stuff and that's fun, but I want to, I want to talk to as many agents as I can about this because this company is like, this, this is something people need to know about. And I feel like a lot of people still have no clue what EXP is. You know, they think they know, or they've never heard of it before, but he's like, I, I, I gotta get the word out. You know, this is something I want to talk about. So he's, he's, he's getting after it. So it's exciting. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Well, yeah. mother, I, uh, I don't want to take much more of your time. I do appreciate you joining us today. Is there, is there, is there anything that, um, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't? No, I think we, we, we covered a, a, you know, a good bit of it. And I feel like we can, you know, in the future, we'll, we'll dive a little deeper into some other, other systems and whatnot and take it from there. Yeah, for sure, man. Do you want to touch on, um, uh, your, your upcoming seminars real quick before I let you go? Sure. So we have, um, Elevate Dominate is, is what Dave and I are branding uh, as this group that we're kind of building out in our region. Um, and we have Thursday from three to five in Ridgewood, New Jersey and Bergen County. We have Elevate Dominate. Um, it's going to be a two hour panel where we're still trying to figure out exactly where we're landing. It, it, it kind of happens every time or what happened to us last week that was a good problem is um, too many agents registered for it. ElevateDominate.com. And then we had to find a bigger venue. Uh, we also on Tuesday, I believe it's three to five, we're going to be down in Monmouth County uh, in Asbury Park, and that is DominateElevate.com. So <laughs> if you want to register for Monmouth County, DominateElevate.com, it's Tuesday. If you want to register for uh, Bergen County, it's this Thursday, three to five, and that is Elevate Dominate. I think yeah. I did that right. <laughs> and highly recommend you guys go. Um, I know people, agents are actually flying in from out of town to go to those events, and I know you guys will drop some value. Um, well, brother, it's been really fun, man. How can people, if people, if people want to connect with you to learn a little bit more about, you know, your system for internet buyer leads or, you know, just listed, just sold, how can people connect with you? I would say, honestly, well, look, my, my cell phone's 973-590-8205 anytime. Um, but also just shoot me a message on Facebook. You guys all have my contact info here too. um, reach out and we'll do, uh, we'll, 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 we'll get you in, get you in our office and show you what has worked, what hasn't worked, um, and love to hear, you know, a little bit about what's working for you and what's not working for you. 
All right, brother. Well, listen, it's been real, man. And uh, if I can ever do anything for you, let me know. And I, I can't wait to connect with you in the future. Awesome. Sounds good, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. All right. Take care. See ya. Bye.